Hello, my name's Jenny and I'm the Head of Nursing for Education and Professional Development at Manchester Foundation Trust. In the year of 2019-2020, I had the huge honour of calling myself a Florence Nightingale Scholar. I had the opportunity of undertaking the Aspiring Directors of Nursing programme. Little did I know at the start of the programme and in the year of the nurse and midwife that 2020 would turn out to be such a challenging year for us all. I'd like to take this opportunity through this presentation to share with you my reflections on the programme, how they have impacted me as a nurse and as a leader within the NHS, but also to say some thanks to those who have contributed to my development through this programme within this year. The pictures in front of you depict some of my highlight moments of my scholarship year. The people around me are my fellow friends and colleagues, the cohort cohort of 2019. It sounds really cheesy, but these guys have been the best bit of the scholarship for me. We all came together in a hotel in central London in April 2019 when we started a two day leadership programme that was delivered by the King's Fund. The programme gave us the opportunity to understand ourselves as leaders, some time to reflect, some time to think about our current leadership challenges, but it also gave us a chance to learn about new concepts, theories, practices, and to learn from each other. It gave us the opportunity to form a network, to form friendships, to form a WhatsApp group, that throughout this last year has been invaluable. It's been hugely active as we all came to terms with COVID. We shared policies, we shared practices, we cried together, we laughed together, and it's still a really active group. And I hope it'll be an active group for many years to come as we support each other, as we continue as leaders within the NHS and within healthcare. Before I started the programme, people said to me, Jen, you're going to love RADA. It's amazing. It's really challenging. You're going to have a whale of a time. I have to say, I was really apprehensive about it. I was really unsure how I would feel. It was going to throw me out of my comfort zone. I loved it. It was great. It was the best three days that I'd ever had. It taught me skills and techniques that I still use every day of the week. The number of times I sit in a meeting or presenting in a boardroom and imagine Johnny sat behind me, tapping me on my shoulder to say, slow down, don't talk as quickly, breathe. The skills that the guys gave us through RADA will stay with me for many years to come as will do the giggles and the memories. For me, I used part of my funding to fund to go on the Windsor Leadership Programme. There was enough of us in our cohort that enabled us to do a bespoke programme. So it was all of us as Florence Nightingale Scholars on the programme. It gave us the opportunity to form action learning sets, sets that we continue to date. We had some amazing keynote speakers who shared with us their leadership journeys. Some that were really touching, some that were absolutely hysterical and really shone a very different light on leadership and different approaches. The second half of my scholarship fell in 2020, the International Year of the Nurse and Midwife. The year that we had so many parties and celebrations planned, but the year that saw nurses and midwives globally responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. My fellow scholars on the Florence Nightingale Foundation programme have been an absolute peer of support. The support that we have offered each other during these really challenging leadership year have been invaluable and one that I will remember for many years to come. Just prior to the, the pandemic hitting, I had the opportunity to visit Somaliland and Ethiopia. 
I accompanied a colleague of mine who's the chairperson of Tropical Health Education Trust, THET. THET were asked to go and do a scoping visit, working with healthcare professional leaders across both countries to identify how funds that could be available to them through THET to enhance their healthcare services and what their development opportunities would be. It was a great opportunity to share with leaders around their challenges. I found myself in both countries talking to nursing peers who were coping with challenges around regulation, how to maintain a skilled and educated workforce, and the role that both regulation and continuing professional development played in patient safety. The top right hand corner is a picture of me, an educationalist, but also a paediatric nurse by trade. I took the opportunity whilst in Somaliland to facilitate a two day education programme on how to manage acutely ill paediatric patients. We spoke with colleagues around how practices and approaches would need to change and adapt due to the resources that were available to staff. We spoke around the importance of child centred communication and shared decision making. I shared my practice of when inserting a cannula or taking bloods, I often used to sing to children. The delegates on the course found it very amusing when I stood at the front singing to them and demonstrating my practice, something that they'd never seen before. The bottom right hand picture is a photograph of myself and two colleagues from City University when we had the opportunity to present at the Commonwealth Nursing and Midwifery Conference a piece of work, a research that we had done about the implementation of new roles into the existing healthcare system. This was a systematic literature review which looked at best practices identified within the literature. The reference for this piece of work is on the second slide. What has the impact of me undertaking the Florence Nightingale Scholarship been? For me personally, it's helped me understand myself better as a leader. To have time to unpick what is important to me as a leader, what are my values, what are my principles? It's helped me to identify my strengths, but also the areas that I need to continue to develop and work on. One of the key things that is fundamental to me as a leader is around how we create a culture of learning. The banner that you see is one that I saw when I was visiting the Ministry of Health in Ethiopia, and it really resonated with me. The project that I have been involved in during the scholarship is around, from several different angles, creating teaching moments, or what I refer to as tea moments. How can you create in everyday work those bite-sized teaching moments, those golden nuggets of education that you'll remember for years to come? Again, with colleagues from City University, we published around how to create teaching moments in daily practice. And at a previous organisation, I led a piece of work that introduced bite-sized teaching moments into everyday work so that you can create space within such busy, busy operational and clinical pressured environments. But if you can create space for a two minute, a three minute, a five minute teaching moment, which could be at the bedside, in a coffee room, in a corridor, how we can embed it into everything that we do so that every day we are learning of how to enhance our care that we deliver to patients. I would like to take this opportunity just to say a few thank yous. To Health Education England, who provided the funding for my scholarship, I'd like to say thanks. Without your funding, the opportunities that were available to me throughout this year would not have been possible. To the Florence Nightingale Foundation, to Greta and the team for leading such programmes. To Flo Panel Coates, who was my mentor within the scholarship, the Chief Nursing Officer at University College London Hospital. 
I thank you, Flo, for all your guidance and support throughout this year, the wisdom that you have given me and the experiences that you have shared. To RADA, the King's Fund and the Windsor School of Leadership for creating such great learning environments. To Tropical Health Education Trust and the chairperson, Judith Ellis, for giving me the opportunity to have such a inspirational trip to Somaliland and Ethiopia, to have the opportunity to work with colleagues in both countries. And to all of those people that I sent random emails to say, please could I shadow, please could I have a conversation. Everybody had said, once you put the signature up, at the bottom of your email, which says you're a Florence Nightingale scholar, doors will open. And it truly does. People have been very welcoming and very, very generous with their time. So I thank you all. And lastly and finally, but most importantly, the Scholars of 2019. By Joe, you've been an amazing bunch. And I am very, very fortunate to have you in my professional life. And I hope you will be there for many, many years to come. <laughs>